Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade, and in this video we'll be making our first enemy, which I'll call the little square, and trying out a couple different variations on the same code. But before we get to that, I want to cover a few core concepts. The first core concept relates to movement, because of course if we have enemies we are definitely going to want them to be able to move around. And that idea, as you can probably see, is that an object's next position is going to equal its current position plus its velocity. So we have our little square. In GameMaker we're going to use the built-in variables x and y to represent its position, at least for now. We'll actually see alternatives to this down the road. If our object has a velocity, then after one frame of game time, its next position will be its current position plus that velocity, like that. So again, the next position is going to equal the current position plus that velocity. And there are multiple ways to represent this idea, but we're going to start with what is probably the simplest. It's definitely the most common. We're going to split our overall velocity into two separate components, h speed and v speed the horizontal speed that an object will move at, and the vertical speed that the object will move at. And what this means is that our next position equation really splits out into two different equations. Our next x position will equal our current x position plus our h speed, and our next y position will equal our current y position plus our v speed. And there are many different ways to write this. Here is the version that we're going to start with, where h speed is going to equal move speed. So this is us setting our horizontal velocity. And then we'll have some other code, but at some point we're going to say x plus equals our h speed. We're going to say x equals x plus our h speed, or our velocity. And that is a direct translation of that formula of our next position equals our current position plus velocity, where x is going to become what our current x is plus our current velocity in the horizontal direction. And here's another form of that right here, where our velocity plus equals our gravity, and then later on we're going to add our velocity in the vertical direction to our current y position to get our new y position. For the moment I'm going to skip over the difference between adding to our velocity and setting our velocity directly, but we are going to talk about that in later tutorials. The next thing we need to understand is how place meaning works. It is a function, it takes three arguments, x, y, and an object or instance ID, and it will return true or false depending upon whether or not there is a collision. If you pass it an object ID, then it checks for a collision against all instances, not only of that object, but of any children of that object. If you pass it an instance ID, it's only going to check for that instance. The final thing to know about place meaning is that it uses a sprite's mask. This means you can't use it with an object or an instance of an object that doesn't have a sprite attached to it or that doesn't have a mask. But to understand this better, I'm going to switch over to GameMaker Studio. So here we are in GameMaker, and I'm in the room editor. I've set the grid size to be one by one, so this is every pixel. And I've upped the alpha a little bit to make it more visible. And here we have our enemy sprite. And this red right here is the sprite for our solid parent. Now both of these sprites use a full image mask, so this entire thing is a mask and all of this red is a mask as well. So if we were to call place meeting on our enemy object right here, passing in x and y and solid parent, we would get false. There's no overlap. If we were like this, we would get true. There would be overlap. And if we were right here, we would get false. There's no overlap. But the next thing to know is that we can offset our mask when we pass in our x and y. So for example, if we were to pass in x plus 1 to place meeting, we would say place meeting x plus 1, y, and solid parent. What that would actually check for, instead of our sprite right here, is it would check for being offset by 1. So it would run that collision check like this. It would run it as if our mask was right here instead of 1 over. And if we were to say y plus 1, it would run it as if our mask was right here, and it would find that there is a collision. And this is in fact exactly what we're going to be doing in our code. We are going to be offsetting our collision checks in different directions. So for example, we'll be offsetting it by 1 to know if we're right next to a wall, and offsetting it by our h speed and v speed to know if we move, whether or not we would hit a wall. Because again, remember that our next position is going to equal our current position plus velocity. So if our current position is right here, and our velocity is 4, our next position at least in the horizontal direction, would be right here. And that would be a collision. So we want to offset our collision check by that amount. Okay, so now let's actually talk about our enemy. 
I've already placed our enemy in the room. Our enemy sprite, by the way, is just a 40 by 40 square with the origin in the center, and as we discussed, has a full image mask. Now the code for our first enemy is very straightforward. We have our two velocity variables that we've already talked about, H speed and V speed. We have moving speed and grav, or gravity. We actually want this to be positive. And we have a direction. If you come over to our step event, you can see how we're using these variables. We have our horizontal velocity, which we are setting directly to moving speed times dir. So direction, or dir, since direction is a keyword in GameMaker, is always gonna be one or negative one. And we're gonna multiply one or negative one by moving speed to move left or right, because if we are multiplying moving speed by a positive number, it will stay positive. And if we multiply it by negative one, then it will become a negative number and we'll move to the left. We're adding gravity to our vertical speed every step. We're running our moving and collide script. And then we're checking whether or not we're next to a solid parent. And if so, flipping our direction. And you can see that we are using the idea of offsetting our mask, in this case by one in the direction that we're moving, in order to check and see if we are right next to a wall. And if we are right next to a wall, then we simply multiply our direction by negative one, which will, as mentioned before, flip our direction by turning positive one into negative and negative one into positive one. But now, before we actually run this, I wanna cover the basics of how this move and collide script works. Hopefully, you can see a little bit more about the logic behind this script. We're calling place meeting and offsetting our mask by our velocity to check for a collision at our next position. Because again, our next position will equal our current position plus our velocity. And we're splitting this into a horizontal check and a vertical check. If we don't find a collision, then we can skip right to adding our velocity to our current position to get our next position. And it is probably worth noting here that I'm writing x plus equals h speed. But this is code shorthand for x equals x plus h speed that exact formula, our new position equals our current position plus our velocity. If we do find a collision, then we come inside of this with statement and we enter a while loop where we check for whether or not there is a collision one pixel in the direction that we're moving. And we determine the direction that we're moving by getting the sign, the positive or negative value of our horizontal velocity. If there is no collision, one pixel in that direction, we manually move one pixel in that direction and we repeat this in our while loop until we are right next to the wall. Then we set our velocity to zero and we can still run our x plus equals h speed line because h speed is zero. And of course, we repeat this for our vertical velocity, the only difference being that we are offsetting our mask vertically rather than horizontally. All right, let's run this. So here we go, our enemy is moving back and forth and flipping directions whenever it is next to a wall. Now, like I said in the introduction, the whole point is to learn not just how to make a enemy, but to use the ideas to make really any type of enemy that you want. So hopefully you've typed out this code or gotten it from GitHub and are going to experiment with it. But I'm gonna go over a couple variations as well. For example, if you want this enemy to move on the ceiling, it's as easy as reversing gravity. We've changed no other code, but now this object is moving on the ceiling. Likewise, if you wanted this object to move on a wall, all you would have to do is switch which direction gravity is applied, which velocity, whether it's the horizontal or the vertical velocity is being applied to, and then to make sure that it bounces off the right wall, switch where we're offsetting the mask. So now we have our object moving on the wall, and if I were to flip gravity, it would pull it this way, and it would move on this wall. And of course, this enemy is acting like it's a platformer enemy. But of course, if you wanted it to be an enemy in a top-down game, all you have to do is remove the idea of gravity. So I'm going to undo our changes here and then comment out V-speed and gravity lines. And now if we run it, you can imagine this enemy as a guard patrolling a room. Or of course, this could be a platformer and this could be some type of floating enemy. And of course, there are many other ways that you could modify just this very basic enemy. And I hope that you try out at least a couple on your own. For example, if you don't already know, it might be worth experimenting with the difference between setting a velocity and adding to that velocity. This is something we'll cover in later tutorials, but you could also try to figure it out now. Well, that's it for this enemy. I'll be back in the next tutorial to talk about states and how we can make our enemies more interesting and dynamic. In the meantime, if you want to learn about loops or functions in 2.3, both of which we used in this tutorial, check out the links down below.